I am naturally, organically amazing. I'm one of a kind. So actually, I would love to see that thing try to duplicate this motherfucker. had a great vantage point. Starting at seven, signed at 11, 12, you're professional. You've seen a lot of changes, so I was gonna ask you, what's been the biggest changes you've seen in the genre since you've been in it? There was no such thing as social media when I was doing this. Everything's changed because of social media. So with that said, our genre of music is no different than everything. One lesson learned that you still carry with you since you started? That answer is always the same, is never stop. Never stop learning. Humble yourself. Humility goes a long way and it'll keep you learning. And I try to get better and better and better and better and better and better and better. And better. That's always my, my whatever rule or something I've learned or lesson or whatever. As far as unforgettable moments, probably my, my first time grabbing a mic at a block party okay. and, and breaking my fear and wrapping the stuff that I had wrapped in the mirror for like thousands of hours that night before. Did you ever subscribe to the notion that hip hop is, was only a young man's game? That's what they used to say back in the day. No, because when I was growing up, all the rappers were old. I mean, I guess I'm just not from that narrative was around because now when I started, people was way older than me. So you know, I started <laughs> laughing, so yeah, everybody was older than me, so. Nah, it was never a, a young man's game. I've always felt when I was a young man, I had to fight my way in. What you have here is brought to you, courtesy of the young man, young Carter. You've kind of been a blueprint. Thank God. Your label, other ventures. Yeah. What role? do you feel that you've played in that evolution because now a lot of rappers are doing the same thing? I get this from watching Jay-Z and watching the way Reverend Run and Russ move and they never stop. They just evolve. Hopefully they, these someone, those under me or those like me or whatever, probably follow my footsteps. Mm -hmm. Others might call you the first rock star. I mean, the way you fuse <laughs> different genres from rock to pop to R&B to soul to everything else in between. And you've got the younger artists like a little Uzi Vert yeah. and Travis Scott, Young Thug and, and Trippy Red have listed you as an influence. So what do you think your influence has been on this next generation of rappers coming up? Everybody got tattoos in their face. Everybody got this but they blah. That's like seeing your kid come out the room and you know looking just like you. That feels amazing. Right. Exactly. <laughs> so yeah, so okay. that part, I see that, that's visible. I see that that okay. influence right there because I know for a fact I didn't get this look from I didn't there was no one that inspired this look. I just ran into looking like this. <laughs> yeah, so they don't have to they can't lie and say they got it. So, <laughs> yeah, but other than that, I hope that uh, my my work my work ethic. All right, I know you've got young money. You've got a roster that you're building. We young money. I, I, I your bed right what does it take to break hip hop artists now? You have to know the social media. You don't, you have to have a team that does. With that said, I think that the uh, main thing today is what has been yesterday and the day before yesterday. You just have to have real talent. Okay. Yeah, because there's so many people and so many people exactly. available to do this. Mm -hmm. and. You have to have real, everlasting, undeniable talent. These artists, a lot of the artists want to be exactly what they see on social media right. and not knowing mm -hmm. what they have inside them. Mm -hmm. They just want to be that and instead of being what they actually can be. We're talking authenticity exactly. as well too. Exactly. So is that hard to draw it out? No, and even if it is a challenge, that challenge has always been one of the most funnest things ever to me, so. What do you listen for? What two or three qualities you think artists today need to have since as you just said it's so hard to rise up above everything that's out there the genre that you're attacking even if it's hip-hop or not you have to be great in that you have to be at least good at least good only if you're willing to turn and work as hard as you can to turn that good into great and then you know come out at me and you'll be talking about the greatest show me think hard to challenge yourself is it hard for you to say to someone it's not there yet. You've had to say that. Oh, not at all. Not, at, not all. Okay. at all. Yeah, if they're my artists, I don't. I can't tell no other artists that. Yeah. 
Yeah, but if you're my artist, oh, hell yeah, I let them know. All you right. better go do that shit again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's been your secret to longevity? Me? I don't have a secret. Okay. I just work and I never stop. I don't do nothing but my music. Okay. In my mind, every single time I say the word work, I ask God to forgive me because I know this has never been a job. So it's just a dream come true. So that's why I've never stopped. I'm excited by the, the growing ranks of female rappers right mm -hmm. now. I wanted to get your thoughts on that. I started at Billboard in 99 and it was, you know, you had your, your Roxanne Kim, Shantes yeah, and, exactly, and yeah. Kim's and, Queens and MC Lights and stuff, and then there's nothing, and then Nikki pops up. Why is this happening now? What's your thoughts on that? Mm, I think that it just wasn't, it wasn't interesting to women. You know, it was as interesting, you know, as the way Nikki and Meg and others have, it looks like, you know, it's, it's awesome. Mm -hmm. And it, it was, I don't think it was as, you know, I don't think they looked at, viewed, at it, viewed it as something that they wanted to do and, and actually make a, make a living from it. Right, and it mm. seems maybe the industry's a little more open-minded. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Now? Oh, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely, yeah. We got here for everything now. Technology, AI, what are your thoughts on that coming into the music industry? Someone was like, someone asked me about that recently. And mm -hmm. so, you know, I was, there was this trying to tell me, it was like, you know, they got someone who can make your voice. Right. And like, and say, like, it could sound just like, and it's like and I was like, but, well, was like, but if it's not me, what? It's like, if it's not gonna say, it was like, but you know, it could say something like, but if it's not <laughs> me, it was like, I'm amazing. Like plain and simple. That was the answer. Exactly, I love that answer. The whole thing too with holograms, it has always bothered me too a little bit. Yeah, and also they cost a lot because I tried to get one Did to you? do it to perform. Yeah, okay. and, I, and they told me how much that was like, oh, man. <laughs> yeah, rest mind. in peace, man. You were a big mixtape person. In the wake of the technology, is mixtape still a thing? The terminology the definition changed. That's all, it just changes, it changes up. Because it, okay. it changed before I started too. Mixtapes can mean an album, it mean anything now. But everybody know when it comes to Lil Wayne, they know how, how, I, approach, how I approach my mixtapes. So my mixtapes will never change. Working on something now? Or? I'm always working. Okay. Yeah, I'm working on Carter Six though. And what can we expect from that? Um, do not set expectations for me because I will always exceed them. So just go there with a clear mind and expect the best. And I'll be better than that. Thank you.